Good day, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and healthy. I am Cholo from the Institute of Tourism and Hotel Management, and I will be the moderator for this webinar. Today will be the first ever launch of our Career Orientation Mentoring and Program Advising Series, or COMPASS. Should, there, should the audience have any questions during the talk, feel free to send your questions to the comment box for the question and answer later. This is a series of featured interviews from respective industry experts from different disciplines. They will share their journey to success, starting from the reason why they chose their college degrees and how it affected their current careers. We are very fortunate and thankful to have our special presenter today. She has indulged us to speak about her journey of how a tourism graduate from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, ended up becoming the vice president and general manager of SMX Convention Centers, handling about seven of its branches all over the country, how she got to manage international luxury hotels, how she became an authority when it comes to tourism and hospitality management. Without further ado, please welcome our speaker, Ms. Maria Agnes C. Passes. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Shall I start, guys? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Far Eastern University community. How are you today? Um, I'd like to take the next 40 minutes uh, to be able to take you on a journey, on my personal journey from when I was still a student like yourselves, um, a tourism student at that. As mentioned, I was um, um, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Tourism in the University of the Philippines uh, many, many moons ago. Most of you were not probably born yet, but um, I would like to encapsulate the essence of that journey in the slides that will follow. Um, share with you in the next uh, 40 minutes. So there, I'd like to be able to make you create and curate your career with the following slides. There's a lot of pictures, so hopefully I will not be bore you so much. Here's a question I want you to ask yourselves. Do you believe you have control over your own fate and can shape your destiny? Or do you believe you are at the mercy of external forces? I want you to just internalize that and see what your answers are to those questions. I know we are at a difficult time at the moment, so perhaps there are a lot of external forces that are um, we are at the mercy of. But all else being normal and back to our old normal, hopefully the answer to the first question would be a yes for most of you. You all know what that is. In fact, I like the, the name of this program. It's Compass. Um, it gives you a direction. It, it gives you, it shows you where North, East, West and South are. Um, I don't necessarily how, know how to use it, but um, all I know is I'm always trying to find my true North. And that's one secret. Your true north, 
I'm sure some of you may have heard this expression. Have you found your true north? True north means a passion in life which leads to extraordinary things. So yan yung um, what you are looking for, what, where you are happiest, where your passion uh, takes you to a more successful place. Um, I will speak in Taglish as I go along um, so that uh, it could be a little bit more informal, if you don't mind. So I would like all of you after this talk to get on the right course, proceed in the right direction, get to your true north. And north is good because it's up, no? North is always good because in my expression tayo, things are going south, which we don't want to do. Going south, um, that expression means things are not going too well. So we'd always want to find our north direction. And that to us, to me, is where the right direction, whether in personal life or in your career. Diba? Sometimes we find ourselves like this, diba? Like a fork in the road. San kaya ako? Where will I go? Left or right? Even when we're traveling, you know, you tourism students, you know, and hotel students, you, we all like to travel. And if we don't have a guide, buti na lang may ways na tayo ngayon, right? When we actually travel. But wala pa tayong ways when it comes to a career. <laughs> So I hope that um, in the next few minutes, I'd be able to share to you my ways. <laughs> and that ways may be a little bit different from your generation, but there are still things that that uh, remain constant uh, as far as career um, uh, curating and creating is concerned. So sometimes this is how we feel. Nandun lahat sa kanan, the rest of our colleagues, our friends, our siblings, our family members, and you feel that, you know, the right way to take is the left side, but, you know, maybe you feel alone. And um, that's not an unusual thing that happens. And, and um, sana, we don't have to follow the the majority just because we want to fit in, just because we want um, to be among our friends. And that is where sometimes the mistake starts. Kasi parang peer pressure. And di ba minsan meron din tayong parental pressure. There are things that um, our society dictates is the better way. But you know, it's not always the best way for you. We're all created, you know, individually with our own dreams. So follow those dreams. So there, <laughs> I thought I'd interest you with this slide. Five wives and one husband. No, it, um, no, I'm not asking you to have five wives or one husband. All it means is we're going to talk about the what, the where, the who, the why, and the when. Those are the five wives. And the one has husband is the how. So there. First wife, ask yourselves, what do I want to be? Kasi, kailangan klaro sa ating isipan what you want to be. You have to visualize your future and picture it. Put it, draw nyo, okay, or Google it. Find out, you know, what your what your future looks like. What field or industry do I want to be in? But you're in the tourism, in your hospitality industry, you have chosen that, that field. And how do I want to make, do I want to make a contribution to this field? You need to be sure in your heart and mind on what it is that you enjoy doing. So that's the what. What do I want to be? The next wife would be, where do I want to be? And that's, 
as you know, common sensical questions to ask yourself. Do I want to live in a big city? Do I want to stay in Manila? Do I want to be in the rural areas and you know and where where my roots are originally from? Do I want to contribute to that little community or little province that I that my family where my family came from? Do I want to work overseas uh, after a few years? Do I want to do an office desk work? Do I want to do field work? Office desk work uh, would be maybe a, a travel agent or you know, um, or or maybe in accountancy of a hotel. A field work would be more on the sales. Um, you you pound the streets looking for business. Um, do I want to deal with different people every day? So maybe I'd be in the front desk of a hotel, or I I want to be um, flying to be a flight attendant, right? Or um, do I want to be with the same work colleagues daily so that there's you know continuity and there's um, um, constant um, things? What kind of person are you? Do I want to work for a private company or a government? Uh, I want to work for the Department of Tourism. Do I want to work for a multinational company, a local company? Where do you want to be? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. That's the second wife. The third wife is who do I want to be? Um, Shempre, you have your own identity na now, no? But um, moving forward, you might want to progress to somebody you idolize, you know? Do I want to be like my mom or my dad or my, sibling, my elder siblings or you know, my, my professor uh, in school or my best friend or, you know, or my very first boss uh, in my first job. Is there a person that you look up to and say, I want to follow his or her footsteps and be like him or her um, in the future? You know, is there a, a personality, a very famous person that you want to be? You know, dreams are free. Dream as big as you can. Um, read autobiographies of famous people, you know, and follow their Instagram accounts. Find out, find out what they are like. Because they reveal a little bit more of their personalities in the IG accounts, right? Or on Facebook. Um, there are many, many... Uh, channels now and and meet social media platforms that you can refer to unlike during our days no walang ganyan newspaper lang talaga and and uh, and yeah and telephone but now there's the information is right at your fingertips and you have access to them so make the most of those and and you'll be surprised because you realize that oh my god i really want to be this person he or she is so successful in what she does and you know and maybe even arrange for a talk with that person if that person is within your within your your reach or within your contactability that's the third wife now the fourth wife is why this road now Um, so this road, oh, will I, well, will I go to an airline? Will I work in a hotel? Will I work in a travel agency? Will I work in a, a convention center, a tour operator? Um, all of those are, are, are within this, the realm of the scope of the course that you have chosen to take. Um, but among the, the projects that you have now, Ano ba yun na enjoy niyo the most? Kasi baka um, it's already a clue on what your passion would be and what your path, what the path that you should be taking is. Um, itong quarantine na to, what did you enjoy the most during the quarantine? These are clues to what your calling is. Okay, so um, itong, there's a lot of introspection that I'm sure happened or is happening while we are 
uh, at home, staying at home, trying to be safe and protecting everyone that we love. Um, and I'm sure things have come to your mind, you know, take those clues and maybe, uh, you know, trust your gut like that. Let's not only be influenced by what our, our friends tell us, you know, sometimes may mga parents din na force tayo on a certain path. Yes, they can advise us and that could be a good guide. Um, but it's not, it's not the, the real path to go all the time. And, um, you know, um, there's an instinct. Everyone has an instinct that you can, that you can rely on and trust it. Um, merong, I use when I when I'm have uh, having to make a, a tough decision, whether it's um, you know especially a life changing decision. Nagsusulat ako ng sa isang pag, I get a pen and a paper and I put pros and cons. So now one one and I draw a line in the middle. Then I put pros. Ano ba ang mga <coughs> mga advantages if I do this and then disadvantages. And you list down. Let the let let the pen write down. Do not filter it. You know, freely list down the things that come to mind and come to heart. And then um, after you're done, read it, review it, and you will find that one side of that paper will have a longer list, and that's your clue already that you're leaning towards that list. You know, at the end of the day, I still suggest you follow what your heart tells you. Because sometimes if it's all logic and no heart, eh, hindi, um, then then the passion doesn't get awakened. And at the end of the day, you want that passion, that heart to come through in everything that you do. Because then, you know, that expression, that age old expression, then it doesn't feel like work, it doesn't feel like a career. If if you wake up and you're with a bounce in your step and you say, I know, I'm so excited to 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 work today, you know, and not very many people find that passion and find that thing. So um, that's the fourth wife. So um, uh, here's just a saying by a certain Jennifer Cummings, knowing that through my true north gives me the courage to focus my energy where I believe it should be not according to what is popular or pleasing to others. So again, don't be pressured by societal norms or family norms. Oh, kailangan ganito ka, kailangan ganito ka. No, you know, at the end of the day, it's your life, it's your decision. And the fifth wife is, when do I want to be there? Um, well, this is dependent very much on how pa how hungry you want to get there, how driven you are, and and how passionate you are. Um, you know, a Gantt chart, no, yung parang critical path. Make make a personal Gantt chart if you want. Give yourself a timeline, a critical path um, that you can follow as you as you travel. Um, your career life. But Shepard, don't beat yourself up naman kung hindi nyo ma-meet yung deadline, right? Kasi self-imposed naman yung deadlines na yun. And, and, and only you can move it. You can move it. Realistically, kung baka nga, baka yung deadline nyo ma-beat nyo pa, so you move the rest sooner. But if, you're, if you don't make the deadline and you fail by a year or a month, don't be hard on yourself because plants are there and they're not 100% going to fruition all the time. And it's, it's, it's always fluid and flexible, di ba? Um, in the times that we're in, kailangan meron tayong degree of adaptability and flexibility in everything that we do. Kailangan fluid tayo, di ba? Every two weeks, naging ibang buhay natin. Every time the president says what the quarantine status is, we need to adjust. And, and the same is true for your career. Adjust when you need to and rest if you need to. Okay. Um, um, 
and ano and um, pat yourself on the back reward yourself with ice cream <laughs> or with with um, with something that you have always wanted uh, to have you know that pair of shoes or that that uh, nice shirt if you have small wins para na encourage then your your success so those are the five wives um, now there's only one husband how do I get there? This kind of mentorship, this compass of Far Eastern University is a good start. And I'm, I applaud the university for doing this for you. Because um, not everything will you will learn from your textbooks or from the classrooms that you've attended. Those are the theories that will help you get through life, of course. No one is trivializing everything that you've learned so far. But you know, the practical things in life is where this compass program comes in. Um, of course, pay attention in your class, take notes, um, schedule a chat with your professor after class uh, or professors that you can relate with and, and then pick their brains because there are things that they don't say in the classroom, right? That they can probably share with you one on one. And then attend personal development sessions. Yung mga webinars, there are so many out there now. Um, and webinars with coaches that are your, you know, are millennials like Jonathan Yabut, or coaches that are a little bit more um, seasoned like uh, Francis Kong. Um, and you're all connected on social media. Social media throws in these suggestions every now and again. Attend those. A lot of them are free. Some you have to invest a little bit, but that is, you know, if that's a, a, a topic that you, you feel very passionate with, then it's worth the investment. Um, uh, don't stop being curious. Um, di ba yung mga bata laging mommy why, mommy what, mommy how, mommy when, mommy, you know, that's how they learn. The kids, the toddlers, the little little um, children, they are naturally curious. Now the the problem we have as adults is we have stopped at one point being curious, and we have started assuming, and that's when all those miscommunications happen. So don't stop being curious. Don't stop learning because stopping being curious is the death of learning. You know, up to however old you become, you never stop learning. And that thirst for knowledge will always uh, get you to good places. Uh, read books. But if you're not the type to, to read books, there are, or, or to, to actually flip pages or use your Kindle, there are audio books for those who are more audit auditory rather than visual. Okay, so hanapin niyo yung mga audio books, pwede rin yon. Work hard, but better work smart. Kasi yun ang mas importante. Some people are, you know, hard at work but not getting anywhere because they're not working smart enough. There are things that uh, can be done the easier way or uh, a faster way. Um, hone your, improve your communication skills. Um, that is very, very important in any organization, whether at work, in any relationship, personal or otherwise. Communication is the key to, to a lot of understanding, um, you should be able to articulate and express yourself clearly. Di ba may expression nga kaya naka World War I nagka miscommunication, right? So um, these are the things that that uh, always pays off to improve, you know, those kind of skills. And um, along the way, find mentors that you can um, that you can hold on to, get advice, consult, uh, coach you. And, and it doesn't have to be somebody at work. It can be somebody uh, among your friends or a, a, a past professor or even, you know, um, 
a coach, uh, a, a professional coach. So um, that's the one husband. I want to show you here just I know this is a bit wordy, but um, I promise you these are very simple and um, very practical tips. Personal impact is very important also when you when you do your career and I, I felt that. One of the successes I had is made on self branding. Um, without my knowledge, my branding palako because my friends tell me I that's so you. Oh, that's so you. And I never realized until um, people validate na, um, that's so Agnes, right? So number one, become known as a person of character and high integrity. Your high integrity is, you know, if you're, you're trustworthy, you know? You do the right things even when no one is looking. That's when you have integrity. Be true to yourself. Your reputation is all you've got. So protect it with your life. Number two, know your values, personal and company, and stick to them. Ang mga company kasi normally may core values yan, honesty, integrity, um, sincerity, lalo na sa hospitality industry, helpfulness, lahat yan ituturo sa inyo when you, when you join a company. Part of the orientation niya ng human resources, they will uh, make sure that you understand the company values and the culture before you actually start your your actual work. Now, your personal values are your what your parents taught you and what your teachers taught you and how you were conditioned growing up. Uh, kung, kung, you know, ayaw na ayaw mo ang, ang nagsisinungaling, then that's your personal value. Stick to that because that will take you places, okay? Um, number three, take responsibility for your life and career. No one will do it for you but yourself. Um, don't blame others if you don't reach the success of a colleague who is more driven and who's more, more you know, taking um, responsibility for his or her own life. Huwag mong sisihin yung skwelahan niyo, huwag yung sisihin ang... ang, 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 ang Ang mga magulang nyo, right? This is yourself. You, 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 you have full control. You have the steering wheel. Build your legacy. So, meaning, um, yun nga, be known as the person who is always on time. <laughs> Don't be known as the person who is always late for meetings or for for anything that you need to be in, right? Um, be known be known as the person who is fully understanding of a situation. Be known as the person who is very kind, but firm. So, yung mga values nyo will come into play in the legacy that you will leave. This is your thumbprint that you will leave. When you all graduate from your college, from your university, you leave a legacy behind, I'm sure. And depending on the legacy and how strong your legacy that you leave behind is, is how memorable you will be to your professors. <laughs> um, and hopefully that legacy is a positive one, right? Because sometimes mga professors, a certain student, for the wrong reasons. And hopefully it's for the right reasons. And then number five, make yourself stand out. Okay. Um, um, you know, you could be a nerd. You'll stand out, but that's your own space. And and don't try to be anything else than what you are. If that is where you thrive, it's if being a, a nerd and being studious and being in the library all the time, or um, you know being the last one to leave the workplace because you're finishing a project and you can't sleep otherwise. Well, that's you. No one is making you do that by yourself, right? Stand out in a positive way. Number six, kailangan trustworthy tayo. In, ang trust is something that you can't put a price on. Di ba ang daming expression, may trust issues yan, kaya ganyan. So, trust cannot be, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, it has to be earned. 
cannot force somebody to trust you. You have to earn it. Okay, so earn the trust and behave like you would like to be seen as very trustworthy. Number seven, use the two most important words in the world. Thank you often. You know, it's very powerful. I'll, I'll add another phrase here. I'm sorry is another. Because, you know, thank you makes you, being grateful makes you happy to begin with. But saying thank you to somebody is, is, is so considerate and so, um, and it's a kind thing to do. Because then you don't, you don't, um, assume that you are, you are, um, what's the word, very um, entitled. Yung iba kasi hindi lang thank you kasi may sense of entitlement. Parang, I deserve this, why do I have to thank you? It's so powerful, guys, to say thank you, and if you make a mistake, say I'm sorry. And, and, and those are powerful things. That's not a sign, saying I'm sorry is not a sign of weakness. On the contrary, it's a sign of strength. Um, that you are actually human. That you're not a robot, right? So say sorry, but learn from it. So don't repeat the same mistakes again. You're allowed to make different mistakes that you can learn from, but learn from every mistake so that you don't get to repeat them. And then to build powerful impact, personal impact, treat every social interaction as a, an opportunity to build and strengthen relationships. So, yung social interaction na yan, whether it's social media or physical interaction, uh, is what it is referring to. Um, networking. Um, madali na rin sa social media to, kasi friends of friends, right? You know who's the friend of a friend. But, um, and, um, some, some social skills is required. Hindi pwedeng, hindi tayo marunong socialize, right? You know, you can start with small talk, the weather, you know, talk about the weather, and then be genuinely interested in the person and ask questions. Um, the key to, to interacting is to really listen and be interested in what the other person has to say. Wag, wag kailangan nakikinig tayo. Listening skills is very important kasi... Wag nating i-rehearse kung ano susunod nating sasabihin. Kailang magiging natural kung anong next nating sasabihin kung, um, kung nakikinig tayo. And then stand up, sit up straight, smile, look people in the eye, shake hands like you mean it. Use the other person's names frequently during conversations. The most wonderful sound to uh, anyone is their own name. So pronounce it well, right? Or, or spell it well if you're addressing it in writing and then looking at a person in the eye is very sincere it's a sign of sincerity but be mindful there are cultures that looking at the eye is also rude you know i i used to live in in um, an island in the pacific called fiji and uh, doon bawal yung tumingin sa diretso sa mata because it's a unless you are an equal you're not supposed to be staring at them in the eye so um, you can just keep your gaze within the what you call the business triangle of the face. So within the eyes, up to the nose, up to the chin. So somewhere here, if you hover your gaze around this area, you're okay. What you don't want is being looking distracted everywhere when somebody is talking. So, you know, um, and smile, smile. We're known to be the smiling nation. So you t use it. Uh, to your uh, to the maximum, okay? But use it only when it's appropriate. Sometimes we smile when, when even if the the message is sad. So do use the appropriate facial gestures and and nonverbal cues for the right tone of of the message. Okay, I'm mindful of the time, so I'm going to make it a little bit faster. Um, number 10, business meals are about business, not the food. Learn and use simple table manners. It makes you look polished and poised. So etiquette in everything that you do, whether it, you go to your, your first job interview or your, you know, um, 
uh, a chat with a mentor or friend, you know, etiquette always. Do not talk while your mouth is full. All of this basic, uh, uh, basic etiquette is you read up. There are a lot of articles already that will uh, show you this. Number 11, dedicate time and money to your wardrobe. OK, um, <laughs> the wardrobe police might come and get you. You know, it's always good to err on the side of conservative. Um, and if you are not very uh, confident about your, your taste in clothes and shoes, you know, ask somebody who is confident, consult them. But invest in this because uh, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, um, first impressions stick, especially when you're coming for an interview. You need to be early. You need to be um, polished. Hindi gusot gusot ang damit, ang mga buhok eh hindi parang bagong gising, and of course personal hygiene. All of all of those count, no? And make sure your clothes fit well and are well tailored. Have your hair cut, styled regularly, um, and because if you look like you're taking care of yourself then the message you're sending across is I can take care of the business or I am um, I am professional. That's the message. <clears throat> and then become a great communicator. Learn to write well, handle yourself in conversations and do group presentations. <coughs> I'll just drink. Then seek out and welcome feedback. Listen to what your colleagues tell you. Absorb it even though it may hurt. Develop a plan to modify behavior and work your plan. <coughs> OK, there. The, the good thing is we have a choice. It's the most powerful tool that we have Everything boils down to your choices. We exist in a field of infinite possibilities. Every choice we make shuts an infinite number of doors. But sometimes you can open that door again. Um, at any point, we can change the direction of our lives by a simple choice. It is all in our hands and our hearts and our minds. Your vision will become clear only when you look into your heart. Who looks outside will dream, but who looks inside will be awakened. And that's when hopefully the coin will drop, as they say, and the bulb, light bulb will light and you will say Eureka, right? And that's from a philosopher who some of you may have heard, Carl Jung. <clears throat> now, I just want to flick very quickly some of the photos I have in my journey, which um, hopefully will inspire you to follow the same. Um, but it's not for the faint hearted because <laughs> I kept moving from one country to another and it had and it took a very understanding husband to come with me um, when when I first got my first overseas assignment, but um, here are some pictures that will hopefully tell you. That's that's alma mater, University of the Philippines, the oblation. Um, that's where where all of you are at the moment at that stage um, in your lives. That's me graduating so many decades ago. <laughs> okay, my my practicum training, practicum ang tawag don, OJT na ata ngayon, uh, was at the Manila Hotel. Right, that that's the lobby of the Manila Hotel. That's where um, I was. I was asked, "What do you want? Hotel, airline, you know, travel agency, convention center, tour operator?" And and my heart told me, "Okay, I I think I want to be in a hotel." And and the Manila Hotel accepted me as a practicum student. And I think you spent so many hours there in different departments, three months at Ayon. And uh, you know, you make beds, you clean toilets, you serve food, and you check in guests. Um, so you you learn the ropes, and you make friends in the industry. That's my second job. My that was practical. My very first job 
was at the Hyatt Terraces Baguio. Hyatt Terraces, unfortunately, in the 1990 earthquake, crumbled, um, and um, and and a lot of a lot of people passed away with that. But uh, in the 80s, that was the hotel in Baguio. But I was based in Manila in the sales office because my very first job was as a sales executive, um, selling Hyatt Terraces Baguio to companies who want to travel there, who want to to uh, hold their meetings, their conferences in Baguio, or just to book their holidays in Baguio. So I was based in the Hyatt Manila, which is now the the hotel along, uh, I think it's called Midas now, along Rojas Boulevard. That used to be the original Hyatt Regency Manila. So there, the first experiences, the very first um, paycheck happened when I was at the Hyatt Terraces. And then um, I, I think about two years later, because of you know social interactions, connections, networking, somebody offered me a job to be at this hotel, which is now known as Century Park Hotel. It used to be called the Century Park Sheraton Hotel in, um, in Vito Cruz near Central Bank and the Harrison Plaza there. It was one of the best hotels during its time. And I spent six years there um, starting as a sales manager and I got promoted to senior sales manager. And at one point, you know, my colleagues who you, we were all sales managers and then I had to, and I was promoted and I had to be their boss. So that was um, a transition that needed to be taken with sensitivity. Kasi magkakaibigan kayo dati, magkakarango, tas biglang kayo na, ikaw na yung boss nila. But um, uh, Sheraton was very good, enrolled me in a course um, entitled From Selling to Managing so that the transition became seamless and smooth. So um, I spent six years there. I tend to be loyal. <laughs> and until uh, this hotel called me, <clears throat> um, after six years with the Sheraton, you might know this very famous lobby in Makati. Um, it wasn't like that when I joined. It was still a plot of land where Rizal Theater was and a Makati supermarket for for those of you who are uh, a little bit my generation. So in the early 1990s, the, we were building the Makati Shangri-La. So we were holding office in Legaspi village somewhere. And we were coming to the site in hard hats. Kasi ina ano pa, ginagawa pa. So we were a pre-opening pioneering team. I was employee number six of Makati Shangri-La during that time and proudly saying so. Because um, that hotel, after Edsa Shangula, Edsa Shangula was six months before the opening of Makati Shangula, was the very first hotel after so many years of hiatus of no new hotels. Kasi Western Philippine Plaza lang, Manila Hotel, Hilton, and Century Park Sheraton, and maybe Intercon was already there. And, and uh, what is Dusit now was the Hotel Nico Manila Garden. Um, and then... Edsa Shangula happened and then this. So um, there's a lot of people interested to view this um, this new hotel. Sobrang parang ano, Disneyland ang pila ng mga taong gusto magpa-showroom. You know, so we were very busy. So I just want to show you old photos. This is the main driveway of, of um, Makati Shangula. Ito yung dinadrop off ng sa lobby. Ito yung pinto ng lobby. That's me there, totay na totay. And uh, that was our GM, uh, a British guy called Nigel Grocock. And these are my colleagues who are in the pre-opening team in sales and marketing. So that was uh, a black and white photo because it's a press release to send to, to the newspaper. Wala pa kasing Facebook noon, right? So we have to post. And then, um, ayan, yung ballroom ng Makati Shangala, yan pa. So that's why we were in hard hats. And um, it was so fulfilling kasi nakikita mo right before your eyes that it becomes, you know, the grandiose that it is now, no? From from all the wood and concrete and the bricks and mortar, and, and it's shaping up. And it's, it's a good thing to do if you want to be more fulfilled 
uh, you join you join a company that's just starting up yung hindi pa hindi pa established para kasama kayo sa growth and it's more fulfilling and you leave a legacy like we were saying earlier ayan yung press release sa diaryo in a point scheme manager sa hard hats pa kami kasi mababaka magbabagsakan pa kami diyan um and that's me right there in the middle um and that's the opening night so kilangan you know bonga because it's one of the the main main event everyone was looking forward to attend that was the 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 um event to attend that time so yan naka naka gown kaming lahat Kalamo mga formal, di ba? <laughs> okay, and then we have our very first uh, promotion as a sales um, team is, you know, whether I whether you're going to Tokyo, to Seoul, to Bangkok, and all of those places. There's a Shangri-La there, um, and then nakabarut saya kami kasi, of course, we're promoting the Philippine uh, Makati Shangri-La, and then. Um, as if opening one hotel was not enough, I was asked to be task force, meaning tumulong ka lang para magbukas ng another Shangula. And this time it was in Jakarta in Indonesia. So after opening Makati Shangula, nag pre opening na, I, I stayed there for three years, including one year of operating. They sent me to Shangula, Jakarta for dapat two months lang para tulungan lang to set up the sales department there. Uh, hindi na po ako pinauwi. So, actually, pinauwi lang ako just to pack. So, um, that's that's my husband then, and that's me then, uh, 30 pounds ago, and that's my son then, who, uh, you know, because of this journey of uh, going overseas, became a third culture kid. Kasi, ano siya, palipat-lipat ng skwelahan, palipat-lipat ng ng bansa palipalipat ng paiba-iba ng lenguahe. So um, I think these are what kids of diplomats that work in the embassies uh, feel, no? Kasi one foot is in one place and the other foot is always in another place. So that's James. Introduce you to James, my husband, and Lorenzo, our only child. Enzo, we call him. <clears throat> Um, and then oh, you, you get opportunities like you meet Margaret Thatcher, the former British Prime Minister. Um, he was one of our guests that time in the Shangri-La in Jakarta. These two gentlemen were my colleagues then, and we welcomed the, the Iron Lady, as, as she is known for, um, in her um, visit to Indonesia to address a crowd of bankers. Um, and that's you know, that's me there sitting on the floor wearing batik because that's again in Indonesia. So very cultural. You have to be adaptable. You have to be since you're in tourism and in the hospitality industry, it should be innate in you naman to be friendly and adaptable and and uh, flexible. So yeah, we have a Canadian GM then and we I have a Korean staff somewhere in that group and most of them are Indonesians. I have a Japanese staff also in the group. But that's one of our parties for our clients, our customers. So we have to dress up in their national costume. And yan, yan din yung sales team ko sa Indonesia. Even if it's a Muslim country, we celebrate Christmas and we give gifts during Christmas. Nagsa sales blitz kami sa mga kumpanya to give them gifts at the end of the year for thanking them for their business. So there. So um, again, you know, religious religion plays a part in in the overall understanding of the culture and then um after a few years there i i, I moved back to a sheraton but this time in surabaya because i got a promotion to a director of sales and marketing so i moved to surabaya another city in indonesia and it's more uh, industrial and um and i stayed there for two years i could have stayed longer but um uh, you know, there was a time Indonesia was in turmoil and there was a, a conflict between the Muslims and the Christians. So all of us expa expatriates, we were called expats that time. We were sent to another country before it gets, um, uh, you know, we, we, we get caught in the middle of all the trouble that's brewing. So um, that's an, uh, uh, the team in Surabaya. We have a Dutch 
GM at that time. This is my Japanese sales manager and the rest are Indonesians. So that's one of our, our um, events that we went to. Um, so I was sent out of Indonesia, but I, was, I wasn't sent home. I was sent to another Sheraton and this time in Bangkok. So empaki na naman kami pamilya. So you know the whole the whole the whole household has to be packed in a 40 foot container and and be shipped, no? So when we are new in a certain place, there are maybe a month or two na we are living off suitcases. Ko ano yung dalalang namin sa aming maleta because the shipment where the whole all our goods are are still sailing somewhere in the ocean and it only arrives maybe two, three months later. So this is what we call the Sheraton Grand Sukhumvit in Bangkok. And this is a luxury collection of the then Sheraton um, or Starwood luxury collection. Um, for those of you who have been to Bangkok, itong sa harap na ito, ito yung Sky Train along Sukhumvit Road. And uh, I was also director of sales and marketing for that very beautiful hotel. And then I, I actually moved back to Indonesia, um, helped uh, fix a problem there because of, of the riots. And then I was sent back to Bangkok. And this time, this is back to Shangri-La. This is the Shangri-La Hotel in Bangkok by the river, the, the Chow Praia River, for those of you who know Bangkok. So this, both of these buildings is the Shangri-La. It had 850 rooms. Most of the hotels I've worked with had more than 500 bedrooms so it's 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 really a, a big a big uh, product to sell to fill up syempre kailangan 100% occupancy lagi yun ang aming objective as a salesperson so that's the Shangri-La hotel in Bangkok and then okay now what i forgot to tell you at some point there and when when we would have holidays uh, you know vacation we would visit our friends who have migrated to certain places, and one of them is Australia. And some of our friends from the university would always engano, ay pumunta na kayo dito, dito na kayo, dito na kayo. So, uh, kami naman, we 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 decided to to apply and and try our luck that time to apply for a permanent residency for Australia, and we and we got it, <laughs> and we got it in um, 1999, I think it was. You know, very quickly, it, we applied like one minute and within the next few months, we got the permanent residency. And that meant that we have to go into Australia for even just for a day or two, come out, papa stamp lang yung passport and, 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 and go back to where we came from. But after five years, you need to settle in Australia, otherwise you lose to your permanent residency. And that fifth year happened to come, arrive when we were... Um, when we were uh, in Bangkok. So thankfully, the Shangri-La was opening a hotel in Cairns. For those of you who don't know Cairns, it's not in France, it's in the northern Queensland of Australia, and it's where the Great Barrier Reef is. Ito, yung hotel, in the picture, is the Shangri-La Hotel, the marina in Cairns. So I, yung Shangri-La Jakarta, binuksan ko rin yon. In Shangri-La, Bangkok, that was existing already. So I was a director of sales and marketing there, and I was area director of marketing also for Surabaya. And then this one in Cairns is, was rebranded from a Radisson Hotel to a Shangri-La Hotel. So we had to do a semi-opening, if you will. So ito yung aerial shot ng hotel natin sa Australia. This is up north in Queensland in a place called Cairns. It's the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef, where Nemo is from. And that's just a family shot where by the, ano, by the, by the yachts there. Malaki na si Enzo. Ayan na si Enzo and my husband. So, so uh, that's doing the Barbie in Australia. Because um, at some point, we became citizens already after staying in Australia. We lived there. Um, for three and a half years and uh, my husband and I moved back to Bangkok and left our son there because he was still in university so he studied and um, while I opened the Shangula in Chiang Mai <laughs> this is a hotel in our um, 
uh, in the highlands of Bang of uh, Thailand ch called Chiang Mai. So it's like maybe the Baguio or the Tagaytay of, of Thailand. So it's one hour flight from Bangkok. I was based in Bangkok, but I was selling uh, this hotel in Chiang Mai. It's a beautiful hotel that we opened. It had uh, close to 400 rooms only, but really uh, beautiful grounds, a beautiful spa. So I was um, a director of sales and marketing for that as well. And Yan, in the night market in Chiang Mai, you can dress up like one of the locals. Maraming pardible yan sa likod. And then, then they take pictures of you like this and then to feel uh, you belong there. So it's it's very rich in culture, Thailand is, and we enjoyed that very much. But everywhere we go, we try to learn a little bit of their language so that we could understand the people better. Everywhere we go, uh, we try to learn the culture, learn the, the I know, uh, not just the shopping, <laughs> but we try to to make friends with them and spend weekends with the locals and visit their houses so that we, we have a full understanding of how they live and how we can work with them better. And I can say we have been successful like that. Um, sometimes kasi we're forced to good kasi mukha kaming Indonesian, mukha din kaming Thai, Thais. Ipapasa kami, napagkakamalang kaming local lagi. So, kinakausap kami ng sariling language nila and if you don't reply in their own language, they might think you're you're rude or you're you're being a little highbrow or high nose because ayo mong umusap ng sariling lenguaje. But um, you know, we I managed to to get my bahasa a little bit more conversational. My Thai is what I call shopping and dining Thai, <laughs> um, and um, my Aussie, my Aussie good eye might has to be turned on when you're talking to an Australian. Um, and of course, um, we we make sure that we um, we leave a legacy everywhere we go. And then, as if my moving wasn't enough, from Chiang Mai I was sent to Fiji. This is the beautiful resort in the Fiji Islands, called the Shangulas Fijian Island Resort and Spa. It's on Yanuda Island. Etong brown roofs na to, eto mga kwarto, mga villa the swimming pool at the young ocean so it's beautiful it's paradise but it's there's nothing to do there right so if you live there you need to know how to enjoy a peaceful quiet life no walang nightlife no walang masyadong restaurant sa pupuntahan the next closest grocery is an hour drive away of 110 kilometers per hour of no traffic so, kailangan bibili ka ng madami na para hindi ka na pabalik balik And you should be able to enjoy, you know, tranquility, you know, sleeping to the lapping of the waves, the sound of the lapping of the waves, or reading a good book, or kayaking on weekends. Kasi, you know, wala kang friends na mabibisita. <laughs> so, magkakaroon ka ng island fever, as you call it, or cabin fever, as some of us are experiencing now during quarantine. And then, um, yeah, yan yung mga ano, Fijian no, nationals, locals. That's my son with his long hair there. But um, this is how they look. They're the probably the friendliest people on earth. Um, they might look like um, giants or big people, but they're really gentle giants and very hospitable and very friendly. And um, and um, the Fiji island is full of Australian and New Zealand guests because that's where the direct flights are very common to and from. And then back closer to home, I have, I raised my hand and I said I wanted to come home because I have aging parents that I wanted to be closer to. Um, so I, I asked, and this is the Shangulas Maktan Island Resort and Spa in Cebu. So I was flown from the island of Fiji to the island of Maktan. Um, after a couple of years in Fiji. So while I'm not from Cebu, um, this is an assignment that is really uh, very unforgettable for us because, um, you know, you learn more about your fellow countrymen in the other part of, of Manila, of the Philippines. And, um, and it's, um, I had one of the best 
teams there, best sales team. They're very, um, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're very open to being taught and being guided. And up to now, I still work with some of them because they followed me everywhere. <laughs> they say, oh, can I follow you? Can I work with you again? So I'm very lucky like that. And I, I might have therefore left a legacy with them, my, my thumbprint, as I said. So this is a wonderful hotel. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these hotels that I've shown uh, are not o operating or not doing well at the moment, but uh, yeah, I'm sure it will. we will all rise again after this is all over. And that's my team there. So <laughs> this is a Korean guy. Um, uh, I have a Chinese. I have um, a Japanese somewhere there. I have uh, there's there's and I have um, I had uh, even a Russian lady in my sales team because whatever geographical markets of tourists that come into your property is the number of nationalities that you have to include in your team. So we are multinational, even if we were in, in, in Cebu. So that's a picture of one of our team outings, our team building outings. Um, very memorable. And then, lumabas uli ng bansa. I was asked to rebrand what used to be the Traders Hotel in Yangon. Traders kasi is a Shangula brand, which is four star, uh, into a Shangula. So, this is the lobby of the then or now Shangri-La in uh, Yangon, Sule Shangri-La in Yangon, where I spent a year rebranding it to a Shangri-La, which is the five star category. And then I said, OK, enough moving around. Enough is enough. Uh, <laughs> I've given enough revenue to all the moving companies. Let's come home. Um, and uh, we came home. Oh, wait, that's a picture of, of uh, Myanmar and immersing ourselves with all what it has to offer. That's my my husband and my, my son and me. OK, and then I came home to an award given by University of the Philippines Asian Institute of Tourism. Uh, the, that time, Dr. Jose P. Manansan, Natatanging Alumni Awardee. So um, I was very fortunate enough to be have been given that uh, shortly after I came home. And this is my new home, another S. Puro S, ano? Sheraton, Shangri-La, H lang yung Hyatt. And then the SMX Convention Center, where I came in as a Vice President Sales and Marketing five years ago. Uh, and my, my home base was this one in MOA. Although, as mentioned earlier in my introduction, I actually oversee the operation of six other SMXs, most of which are based inside our SM Mall. So one in Aura, in Mega Trade Hall, in Davao, in Bacolod, and in Cebu. And we're building one in Clark, which will open early next year. And we're opening one in Olongapo, hopefully in a couple of months time. So there, when you're working for, for a convention or, or a hotel, you get to represent your company when you go overseas for trade shows, so there, makikita nyo, it says Philippines on top there. That's a Philippine pavilion, iba-ibang properties. May travel agent dyan, may hotel, may airline, may Philippine Airlines, may Cebu Pacific. And, and, we're, and, you know, and the buyers come to see you at your desk and you have a PowerPoint presentation to sell the destination. When you sell, it's always destination first and then your property next. Kailangan malaman muna nila na Pilipinas is worth coming to. So, yeah, that's... And and yeah, you know, kami may lanyards because we are uh, uh, delegates to um, uh, a trade show, as we call it. And it lasts for about two, three days. And you see many buyers from all over the world from different um, different companies. Ayan, sometimes we get to dress up like that in convention centers when we want to entertain our guests. Uh, in in a, in a function we called culinaire, so we 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 set up for them all the food from our caterers, and then we said, oh, today we will have the cowboy theme, so that's why we're all parang western attire, and then the next one we we said everyone in black and white in the next year, so yeah, and some that's some of our teammates here in uh, SMX uh, um, 
Manila. Um, this lady I used to work with in Shangri-La Mactan and this lady too. So um, I can't get rid of them like a bad rash. <laughs> okay, and then that's, that's me. I have just been, again, fortunately promoted to Vice President General Manager of the property. So not just promoting and filling up the spaces, but I'm now in charge of all operations, finance, lahat na po, in my little shoulders. So I, I was awarded that title on the 16th of June of this year. So not even two months in a very difficult time. So um, yeah, we shall persevere and we are, we are persevering. That's the team uh, of SM Hotels and Convention Centers after one of our team building sessions. We know how to have fun too, despite uh, our business uh, being um, uh, a lot of uh, serious uh, seriousness also in between. And he, I'll leave you with this. Until you spread your wings, you will have no idea how far you can fly. Unfortunately, we don't know who that is. And there's me attempting to fly with a jump shot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Salamat po. Sir Cholo, sorry, uh, your microphone is on mute. Please unmute your microphone. Sorry. Thank you. And thank you very much, Miss Agnes, for that wonderful and inspiring um, talk about your uh, journey from your college degree, going to different or opening different hotels and now being the vice president of SMX. And thank now you. we will be proceeding with some questions posted by our viewers. Let us start with actually there's a comment we would like to read. Uh, this was posted by one of our viewers from Facebook Live. It says, I'm always like this. I'm full of confidence and self-trust, but when I knew people do not trust me or my work, I always doubt myself. What can you advise to today's generation experiencing self-doubt? Okay. Um, no one can dictate can you hear me? Yes, yes. Clearly. Okay, all right. No one can dictate what you are except you. Okay? Um, it, it, you shouldn't exist and, and uh, need validation. You need to believe in yourself a little bit more because their opinion is something that... Um, that... Um, is, is based on their problem. They have the one that has issues, not you. Um, more, more often kasi, mini-mirror nila yung weakness nila and making everyone feel the same way. So, uh, para hindi sila nag-iisa, they also, some people have the tendency to put others down. Para hindi sila nag-iisa dun sa place where they are down, right? Um, so, uh, treat it as a prob as a problem that they have that they have to solve and not yours. But if your if your um, love language is affirmation and validation, you can get it from your true friends, get it from the people that really know you, and accept it from them and filter it from the people that will only harm that self confidence and that um, uh, your idea of yourself more. I hope I was able to answer that question. Okay. Thank you for that, Ms. Agnes. Another question would be, what if my dream does not correspond to my current situation? For example, I have always dreamed about being a flight attendant, but with the current COVID situation, it doesn't seem like it is possible for now. What do you suggest I do? Okay. I, what I forgot to tell you is, ganyan din ako at the beginning. When I first graduated, sabi ko, naku, ang sarap siguro mag-flight attendant because you can travel everywhere, right? Parang it's every young person's dream to see the world. 
And so I, I, I actually went for an interview with Cathay Pacific. Pero ang unang-una, yung height muna, di ba? So I wore my highest heels only to be asked to remove them at tutungtung ka dun sa where the, they measure your height. It, it, I failed right away. Totally. Because like I'm like half an inch shorter than their requirement. Kasi dapat abot mo yung cabin. So at first you feel down, but in retrospect and in hindsight, sabi ko talagang it's just a door that closed for me kasi may opening, merong isang door na mag-open. Um, it, it, it's probably a redirection in itself that I was turned down. Ngayon, you, you, let me tell you something. You don't have to be a student of tourism or hospitality only to be able to be a high-flying F&B service diba? Uh, attendant, really, because that's what it is. And you are risking your life all the time when you're flying. So I would, I would, if I were you, um, aim a little bit higher, aim for the moon, and if you fail, you land in the, among the stars, right? If you don't reach the moon. Um, pwede ka pang mag-redirect na, never too late. You have heard people change gears. I have a cousin who is, was a summa cum laude for Ateneo of BS Math, right? And you know, and he was like valedictorian all his life in Philippine science, Philippine science high school. Very, very smart. And and then went to Asian Institute of Management for his PhD and nag, nag Asian Development Bank. But his passion, his calling, you know, na bigla siya nabuhain, bigla siyang nagkaroon ng awakening at later in his life, nagpare. So he, he became a priest very late in his life. Siguro mga magpa-40 na siya, oh, late 30s. And, um, and, he, and, and he, he, he changed gears. Pwede yun. You, and it's still too early for you to, to say, in, you know, it's too late. Um, you have a lot of chances. So introspect, use this time of quarantine to think. And like I said earlier, magsulat ka ng pros and cons. Um, and know in your heart what you want, huh? Um, and and aim high, aim high. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, another question would be, um, what can be a good advice you can give to a teenager who cannot decide which field to focus on or pursue? Okay, uh, you know what? Uh, I might have alluded to it earlier. One of the clues you might have is your favorite subject in school. Huh? or your favorite pastime, or look back in the last few weeks, what has made you so happy and or passionate in doing? You know, and, and, and hopefully you are where you need to be, but I will not discount the possibility that you may not be where you need to be. And we have need to open our minds and hearts to that possibility. Kasi, um, I ano mo, um, nag-e-enjoy ka bang maging sariling business mo? Nag-e-enjoy ka ba na may, may, may boss ka? Are you a follower? Are you a leader? Uh, ask yourself these questions and answer honestly. Hindi yung answer na maganda. It can be a, an answer that's, that's not gonna be nice, right? It can probably hurt you. Um, and and then ano and then admit it, accept it, because may denial space yan. And when you're a teenager, natural yan, natural na yung hormones natin. Ano kaya gusto ko, di ba? And if your hormones are raging, hindi mo nga alam kung siya yung crush mo, yung isa, right? So that's the same. That's the same confusion that you're going through. Don't beat yourself up to that. And um, some people awaken to it sooner. Some people awaken to it much later, like I just said a few minutes ago. Um, but consult your best friend, the one who can tell you the ugliest truth, not the friend who will tell you only what you need to hear. Because they can see you from a distance. They can view you outside of yourself. And it, it might not be the things you want to hear, but, you know, you need to to um, 
accept it and 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 put it somewhere there and then sleep with it don't think of it too hard sometimes the answers come when we're not thinking too hard personally that might want uh, that that might be one of my takeaways no you need the answers that you that's genuine not the oh, oh. answers that you really want to hear or the good that's answers. right absolutely okay, so, we have two more questions um, the next one is what if i don't think i have any standout quality or confidence that sets me apart how do i build on that okay everyone is created um unique and, and everyone is enough <laughs> i will you are enough and there's something about you that's special you probably just haven't found it i think what needs fixing is your self-esteem to begin with because i don't like hearing that there's nothing standing out about you my example earlier that even the nerds even the freaks even the the people who is not our epitome of a famous person has something unique to bring to the table and it it does not have to conform with the societal you what is unique and what's nice um you probably are very good in uh, no in in empathy then maybe you can be in in uh, no in in guidance counseling because you know people who have gone through some difficulty or self esteem issues can empathize more imaganon find that strength merong course that you can enroll in called strength finder unfortunately human nature has a tendency to find faults mas madaling mahanap yung mali but there is a course i think it's a gallup g a l l u p training called strengths finder so that's when you actually pinpoint the strengths at saka i-magnify yon and then build from that that's where you will grow from that particular strength of yours it's there do not doubt for a minute that it's there whoever you are who asked this question you are you have a standout quality hindi mo pa lang na discover believe me thank you thank you uh, miss agnes and then lastly this one is a personal question how do you see the future of events management considering what is currently happening now with the pandemic yeah um yes uh one of the most hit is of course any mass gathering any conglomerating um we are a vector of the spread of the virus kaya that we're also the last to be allowed to go back reality and we cannot deny that and um along with the hotel industry this is really uh you know we we got punched and 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 what do you call that um uh you know totally curveball tumama sa atin hindi natin nasahan blindsided tayong lahat but hindi naman to forever <laughs> um this will pass people will travel again like we established earlier that's why there's a lot of tourism students because travel is such a passion for everyone um uh, coming to coming together we are all social animals we want to be together kaya nga nagkakahawahan eh nagpipumilit tayong mag to get together right away so if we if we just be patient stay home uh heed all the advice and and protocols that we are being asked to do then maybe we'll be able to come back sooner in the meantime uh we will maximize and leverage the this space this this virtual space uh, for events. We we also do virtual space, and you can you can make money in in webinars too, and and then eventually baby step tayo, which we call hybrid events, or or blended events. You merong offline, so kami online, um, and 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 that's the next step. Iniintay na lang natin mag MGCQ, and then when when all else, all the quarantine, the vaccine has arrived. 
I tell you, everyone will try to want to attend that cosplay, attend that food expo, attend that that uh, conference, register uh, to be in that uh, in that bazaar, um, and 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 shake each other's hand again. So don't lose hope. It's just a matter of time. We we are confident that, um, you know, we just finished our budgeting for next year eh? and we're hoping that by first quarter next year we, we are uh, already back uh, getting events already. In fact, meron pang ang gustong mag events this November and December. So they're just waiting for an MGCQ to be announced. Thank you so very yes. much for your There's hope. positive output with regards to the events management. And I hope mm -hmm. sana talaga, um, we do see a bright future ahead of us after this pandemic. Oh, thank you. Um, actually, we have SMX in Bacolod. And Bacolod is already MGCQ for a good month already. They're already accepting events in our SMX there. But uh, they've started with religious gatherings. Um, uh, but 50% of the capacity. If if 1,000 people is normally what we can accommodate, 500 lang a maximum. So there's observance of the the two meter radius uh, physical distancing. So again, thank you very much, Miss Agnes. And I think um, I'll be closing the webinar now. So I'd like to thank everyone. We sincerely appreciate your attendance. You have been a part of an FEU milestone, and we hope that our subsequent programs would have the same success as this one. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Agnes. Your stories, is ve your stories are very much needed in this time to remind us that hard work always pays off no matter what. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you, 